Hey there guys, today's going to be a very focused portion of a rather small part of the travel trailer project, but definitely a very important part. I'm going to be installing the permanent coupler as well as the weight distributing hitch and the sway bar setup. So if you're into welding, this might be an interesting video, and if you aren't into welding, it might be pretty boring. But anyway, I'm going to show you what I have set up and how I've installed it. And then at the end, I'll talk about uh, why I am installing this uh, weight distribution hitch and the coupler I chose and all that good stuff and then some of the things that are to come next in this project. For those of you who are new to the project and those that might not remember the full backstory as to when I originally built this trailer frame, let me give you a quick overview because it might help some of the things that I'm doing make a bit more sense. Roughly about two years ago I received a used axle for my brother-in-law and I started to build a trailer off of that axle. My original design was to go for something more along the lines of a smaller teardrop style trailer, but as I've changed my plans over the past couple of years, I decided to make the trailer bigger and therefore some of the components that I had in the original frame aren't quite what I need for what I want to do. So when it came time to choose a coupler, I decided I wanted something much more robust than the original bolt-on style coupler that I started with. So I chose a bulldog style coupler, but unfortunately the smallest size tubing that they will fit over is a three inch square tubing. And the tubing that I had coming out the front of the trailer tongue is a two inch square tubing. So what I'm aiming to do is layer steel until I get up to that three inch threshold and basically weld each one of these pieces on individually until it becomes one solid piece that I can eventually mount the coupler over. All of the welding that I'm going to be doing on this is known as stick or arc welding and I'm using 7018 rods because they're known for making very strong and durable welds. The welder that I'm using is the same one I use for all of my projects. It's my Forney 190 multi-process unit. Most often you see me use it for MIG, but it is also stick and TIG capable as well. Now that the initial tack welds and end welds are done to this piece, I'm going to be welding on the top of it. And for that, I've added some weight to the tongue of the trailer. And the reason for this is because I'm going to be doing some longer welds on the top of it. And the welds as they cool sometimes have a tendency to pull that material. And if you're not careful, it can actually bend it upwards. So I'm going to be doing this in four separate sections. Um, just so that uh, I don't overheat it too much and in between each one of these welds I probably waited about 15 to 20 minutes. With that initial piece added, now the tongue has gone from two inches wide to two and a half inches wide. So now I'm gonna add two extra pieces of quarter inch steel on either side to bring the total width to three inches. And I'm just using the same process. I'm tacking everything into place. And then I'm gonna be doing each one of my welds and letting them cool for 15, 20, 25 minutes in between. So at this point, I think I have a pretty good solid base to attach the coupler to. Those last series of welds I really focused on and took my time and made sure that they were getting adequate penetration into the base steel so that this is just one solid block that the coupler is going to be attaching to. Okay. 
One thing I did want to point out regarding these side welds is a mistake I made. I welded these in a downward direction and typically with 7018 rod you should weld going in an upward direction so that you don't contaminate your weld. Well, I did realize that mistake and I ended up grinding them down and re-welding in an upward direction. You can see a little bit of a difference on one of those side welds in the up and coming clips. But I did want to point that out just for the <laughs> welding police that I'm sure will point it out for me. After getting the majority of the welding done, I decided to focus on adding the weight distribution and sway bar setups. This isn't a super terribly complex process, it's mostly just a matter of getting everything lined up and having the chains pretty much in a straight up and down position so that as the vehicle turns they have a little bit of room to move. But I did have to remove the battery box so that I could get these attachment points set in. Uh, but you'll see in just a second after I installed the sway bar uh, that I was able to make some rubber bushings to hold the battery box up slightly higher than those. And I actually think that will provide for a smoother ride for the batteries that will eventually go in there. And after I got the battery box back up onto the trailer, I realized I didn't have any safety chain attachment points, so I just cut this little piece of steel to fit directly underneath the trailer tongue to where I could drill some holes and have a place to put the safety chains. I think it actually looks pretty cool, and I also think it serves to give even more strength to the whole setup. And as usual, I finished it off with a little Homestead Anomics Gray, also known as Smoke Gray in Rust-Oleum. Um, and then I added this cool little piece of aluminum trim that I really think uh, makes it look really sharp. Alright, so as I am fond of saying, that is pretty much it for this video. Now I'm going to try to answer some of the questions that you may have about uh, the coupler and the hitch and uh, why I've installed them. Well, first off, I will start with the hitch. If you remember back to, I think, the first video, I did have a hitch on there, but it was a bolt-on hitch that I got off, off of Amazon. I don't necessarily think it was a bad hitch. 
Um, but as I started doing research, I heard lots of good things about these bulldog style couplers uh, being very secure and having less risk of uh, be becoming unshackled or uncoupled. And it was just something I figured, you know, I've put a lot of uh, time and effort into this and I wanted the most secure coupler that I could have. And the next question I think some of you may be wondering about is why am I choosing to install a weight distributing hitch on this trailer when it's not going to be that heavy? I'm still aiming for probably a 2,500, maybe 2,700 pound uh, total weight. So it definitely does not need to have a weight distributing hitch. Um, but there are a couple of reasons where I think it is advantageous to put it on. And one of those reasons is so that uh, if I ever change vehicles in the future and I don't have a, uh, a larger truck, that I could potentially pull this with a smaller SUV and uh, still have everything nice and level. And then the other reason is more of a safety issue is the fact of when you're braking in a trailer, um, especially emergency braking, you know, when your vehicle stops, you usually lurch forward and the trailer is going to want to do that too. But if the trailer is lurching forward, it's going to push the uh, backside of your vehicle down and raise your front wheels up in say an emergency situation. Well, that takes away your primary braking of your front tires and the weight distributing hitch keeps everything level so that when you brake, everything stays level and it doesn't mash down on the back side of your vehicle and uh, take away some of your braking power. I don't know if that made sense, but uh, that's the way it makes sense in my head. So basically, uh, the uh, emergency braking uh, or just uh, having better, safer braking and then the option to have a, a different vehicle in the future or if I had a friend who wanted to take this out um, and they had a small SUV, they could certainly do so. But I definitely want to camp in it probably 35 times <laughs> before I loan it out. And the last question I think a lot of you guys probably will have is why didn't I install all of these things right at the beginning of the build when it was just a steel frame? And for that I have no good answer. It definitely would have been the most opportune time to do so. I wouldn't have had to grind off paint or protect all of the things that I had already installed on the trailer. And I guess I can just chalk it up to I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with that in the very beginning and I just kept putting it off and saying I'll figure it out later, I'll figure it out later. Well, it is later, but it's finally done and I'm glad it's done. Okay, so what's next up in the travel trailer project? I think I've got about five more things that I need to do to make the trailer campable and trip ready. Uh, currently, I have started working on running the 12 volt wiring within the trailer, but I'm thinking it's going to take me a little bit of time. So the next travel trailer related video might be one of the smaller projects, uh, like adding some steps to the trailer, or uh, I've got some plans to make a hitch lock. <laughs> Yeah, I know it's a more welding type stuff, uh, but then after that it will definitely be the 12 volt wiring and showing uh, most of the lights installed in there and then I will do the kitchenette and at that point I'm going to call the travel trailer uh, camp ready and there will just be a couple little uh, fine tuning things that I need to do like actually hooking up the trailer brakes. I probably won't do a full video on that, I might just do an update on uh, one of the other videos or maybe on the uh, the first camping trip video. But anyway, I think that is going to do it for today. Hope you guys found this video interesting. And uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more similar content. And uh, uh, check me out on Instagram for behind the scenes stuff. And uh, I will see you guys next time. It's getting cold.